Thank you so much for being on today, everybody. I am thrilled, just absolutely thrilled to be able to present a newer friend to me, um, but someone that's a friend of almost everyone in the industry. When I've been speaking to different friends who have been a part of the industry for a long time, they always ask, do you know Sandy Cohen? And, and of course, you know, we've met, we're a part of association that she joined um, late last year. And so we've met, but we're really just beginning to get to know each other. And I'm so thrilled because she's a part of Isogenics. And so we get to really get together. And I, for, I foresee so many great things happening with our relationship and such a mentoring experience. But everyone that I have spoken to, when they ask that question, and they're like, do you know Sandy? And I'm like, well, I know of Sandy. This was back then. I know of Sandy, but I don't know her well. They're like, you have to. You have to get to know her. She's like the most incredible woman. And it, it, taking away the experience and the knowledge and the passion for this industry and helping people, but just who she is in general. And I've seen that. She's dedicated. She's loyal. She's committed. She's passionate. She's smart. And she's just absolutely brilliant and beautiful inside and out. So I'm, I'm thrilled that I can introduce her to you guys and have you get to know her. And what we've asked her to talk about today is her story because it is, it is so powerful. And it's one of those stories that tells us when, when we want something bad enough and we're committed, we really truly can make things happen in whatever degree that may be. And Sandy is that example of, of doing the extraordinary and, and making things happen that people dream about and vision and, and just taking it to so many levels. And so she's gonna share with you a little bit about so, how and, and why, um, but she also is passionate about her product. And it's the Zango product. And that's what really, when I was speaking to her earlier, she just, the, the passion that came out when she started talking about Zango, which of course we all have access to through Zija. And you've, you've felt her passion and her excitement and her love for this product, not just because it's what it's done for her financially, but also for the health and what she has done for so many other people. And that's how we started our conversation of, tell me a little bit more about Zango. I'd love to tell you a little bit more about Isogenics. We all need to know a little bit more about Zija. And then we started diving into much more after that. So that's what she's going to share with us today. I'm excited. Please feel free if you want to invite a few other people to come on and, and hear more about this story because it is going to be um, pretty in-depth and exciting. So Sandy, thank you so much. I treasure our friendship. I'm so glad we're doing this stuff together. And thank you for sharing today. And thank you for inviting me. You know, Stephanie, um, your team is, is just so special to have you as their friend and their mentor, because the truth is our business is about relationships. So um, I, I'm on a sort of time crunch here. So if it's okay, I'm gonna try to share my screen so we can get started with the agenda that hopefully we will be able to accomplish today. Let me pull up my PowerPoint. Okay, and here we go. All right. So uh, let me see if the speaker view is available. Oh my goodness, let's see if I can get that going. Sandy, we, um, I've got it on speaker view on the recording. Okay. The live. So if anyone else wants it on speaker view, just upper right hand corner. Yeah, okay, so we're good to go. So first of all, thank you, Stephanie, for inviting me to talk about one of my favorite subjects is how people can truly get whatever it is they want. And it's different for each of us. I, I used to do a presentation um, with talking about the P's that drive our business. And it's, of course, purpose, passion. And we have to build this through people. It's not what Stephanie does. It's not what Sybil does. It's not what I do. It's how do we help other people accomplish their goals, regardless of what they are. So we're gonna talk a little bit about Eddie and I, and I love to show this picture because uh, Eddie and I are childhood sweethearts. Um, we actually met when I was 15 years old, braces and all. 
and uh, in, uh, uh, been married since the beginning of time. I don't even want to tell you how long, but if you look at the math there, 1963 was when Ed opened the first of his five pharmacies. And I was not two years old at the time. <laughs> but anyway, um, both graduates of Temple University uh, were from Philly and it's chilly Philly, I should say right now. And uh, Ed graduated with a degree in pharmacy and I graduated with a degree in education. And during that time of integration, Martin Luther King was one of my heroes because we're Jewish persecuted since the beginning of time. And I really, really wanted to make a difference. And I volunteered to be the first white female in an all black school in North Philadelphia. And I guess that was the beginning of knowing my purpose in life to somehow impact in a positive way. So um, uh, when, how I got into network marketing is a story, obviously, we're a storytelling business and nobody wakes up one day and just says, oh, I think I'm going to be a network marketer. No, um, uh, circumstances push us that way. But when I got into network marketing, I was shocked to find out that there was no professional unified association. When I was a teacher, I helped my uncle start the um, teachers union in Philadelphia, which eventually went nationwide. When I was fast forward into the medical and surgical supply business, started a state association and then a national association. My husband's a pharmacist, obviously part of an association. So actually 19 years ago with dear, dear friends, and you may, if, you're, have you, if you've been in the profession of network marketing for decades, you'll know the name Rod and Marcy Cook. And Rod Cook was known as the MLM watchdog. And I used to call him the Robin Hood of our profession because he'd really call out the money games, the Ponzi schemes. And we just lost Rod recently. Um, dear friend and um, a total loss, but he's left a legacy of what our profession should be like. And um, it's, you know, the profession has changed over the last three to five years, especially since the pandemic started, which obviously is a science fiction movie that the world is living in, just waiting for it to end. I mean, Stephen King couldn't have written it any better. So we actually founded the Association of Network Marketing Professionals 19 years ago. It started out as the Distributor Rights Association. And now, how I met Stephanie and so excited to become her friend and colleague. We are now both on the distributor council of the social networking association. So as someone who understands how to stand out from the crowd, you need to be members of these organizations because if you are building rapport with people and Let's be honest, you're probably not the only one they're talking to about whatever program they're looking at. When you're a part of association and you put it in your, on your business card or your digital business card or you know, in your emails that you're a member of the Social Networking Association or the a &P, it sets you apart. So if somebody's looking for a partner, who would they choose? Obviously, for me, I'd want the person that's so committed because you wouldn't join the association unless you were committed to duplication and multiplication. So Stephanie can get you all the links for social networking as well. So what's your story? Everybody's got a story. And, you know, it, it's amazing if you speak to people who are, quote, successful and that depends on what you define as success, but we've all got a story and you know, we've got ours. And uh, as I said, married my childhood sweetheart. Uh, we uh, had a magnificent 10,000 square foot home in Haverford, Pennsylvania on uh, College Avenue. Um, we had a, an English houseman, a cook from Grand Cayman, a Rolls Royce, a stretch limo. I was living my dream, our living room, our living room at our home, we had weddings, sit down dinner dances for bar mitzvahs of a hundred people in our living room. And I thought that life would never go away. 
But for whatever reason, sometimes we make decisions that alter the direction of where we are now and where we're going. So fast forward, uh, we enter a downward spiral. And if you know anyone that's ever experienced a downward spiral, you just pray, when's it gonna end so you can start climbing back up again? And it's interesting, I have a very dear friend in um, Reston, Virginia. She was voted businesswoman of the year. And I was telling my story. And after I got off stage at one event, she said, Sandy, Sandy, don't tell your story. Don't tell anybody that you had it all and you lost it. You don't want people to know that. And so I stopped telling my story. And shortly after that, Ed said to me, what's going on? Why are you not sharing your story? People need to hear and have hope that if they've experienced a downward spiral, they can still get their life back. So of course, I took counsel from my sweetheart and started telling our story again. But uh, in 1978, I started a medical and surgical supply business in the front of one of Ed's five pharmacies. And with the, if anybody's old enough to remember the yellow pages, that's how I built my business. I started with A and went to Z, called every doctor, every hospital, every physiatrist, every personal trainer, whatever I needed to do to build that business. And when, within three years, I had a multi-million dollar business servicing Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware. In fact, across the street from this particular pharmacy was a supermarket that went out of business. And I said to Ed, you need to buy me that supermarket. And he went, what? I said, I need that supermarket. And of course he did. 36 employees, a gorgeous showroom, six trucks on this street, but we worked the business 24 seven, you know, 30 hours a day, eight days a week and um, half a million dollars in inventory, million dollars in receivables. And after about three years and many, many years of severe migraine headaches, my specialty was pediatrics, helping families with children with spe special needs like spina bifida, cerebral palsy, cancer, near drowning, quadruple I, I was a pioneer in adaptive seating and augmentative speech devices, got state laws changed for children with special needs, worked with Senator John Hines on the Committee for Aging. So I was all in, but the stress was unbelievable. Constant migraine headaches in spite of taking some serious drugs that did not work. So we decided to sell the business and uh, we wanted to stay on and a group of private investors acquired the business and within seven months defaulted and didn't pay us. So began an eight year nightmare in the court system. And if you know anything about litigation, Philadelphia is one of the worst in the country to get your day in court. Took us eight years to finally get our day in court. And there was a TV show called LA Law. I never missed an episode. And I watched them over and over and over again. So if you need legal advice, I think I'm an attorney because if my attorneys would have listened to us, I think we could have moved a whole lot faster. But anyway, we finally get our day in court. And uh, eight years later, picked a jury, two days to pick a jury. And at the end of the second day of picking the jury, it was a Friday afternoon and it was about 2.30, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And all of a sudden the judge stood up on his podium and just threw a bunch of books on the floor. And we were all startled, like, what's he doing? And he goes, counsel in my chambers now. So they all went into the, judges chambers and came out about 35 minutes later. And here's what he said. He said, the Cohen's have been harmed enough. I am not going through an expensive legal jury trial that they'll never understand because of course they went out of business seven months after the litigation started. So now it's almost eight years and they're out of business. And he said, I'm going to pierce the corporate veil. And he did. And so we were, dead right, dead broke, 
And the settlement was so small at the age of 52, we were $450,000 in debt. What do you do? Now, at this point, we moved west. Um, I remember sitting in the last pharmacy, and it was a miserable winter day. It's, um, a right date hadn't taken it over yet. And I'm sitting there crying because we were losing everything. And I said to Ed, if I have to start my life over, I want to see the sunshine every day. And our youngest son was at the University of Arizona at the time. So we moved to Arizona and moved into a little townhouse, uh, had to share a nine-year-old car with no air conditioning in the summer in Arizona. And for those of you who know the heat in the summer in Arizona, it gets to about 110 in the shade. And the vehicle that we shared had roll-up windows. If you remember roll-up windows, and if you rolled the passenger side down, you had to pull it back up again. And of course, before it got better, it got a whole lot worse. Uh, my mother took sick in Florida with uh, breast cancer and early dementia, which eventually um, morphed into Alzheimer's and I would not put her in a nursing home. I used to service them. So uh, we brought her to Arizona to live with us, to be diapered, to fed, suctioned on oxygen for five out of the eight years we were going through the litigation. And the only reason um, that they didn't shut off our electric because we were struggling so badly was uh, mom was on life support. So by law, they couldn't shut off the electric. And that's, that's how we were living compared to the other way of life. So this was my office in that townhouse in Fountain Hills, Arizona. Um, and for those that you know, know the area, we were actually in Fountain Hills before they even had a supermarket. We love being first. We love being early. We just love the area. And when I moved to Arizona, somebody gave me the name of a lady on a yellow three by five card. And they said, when you move to Arizona, give her a call. You'll love this lady. And of course I did. And ironically, she has the same last name as me, even though we're not related. And we met for coffee told her my story and she listened to me and I cried and she said to me, so what are you going to do? And, and I said, I honestly don't know. She said, well, you've already made the decision that you're not going to go back to teaching. Hell no. You know, I could never make enough teaching to get out of debt. And she was a very successful realtor. Her husband was a high end builder in Scottsdale and he loved to travel and she was one of those rare realtors that actually sold the property every month but she hated it because when she went away she had to turn her clients over to another agent and she said to me you know Sandy I'm looking to replace my income and I think you can get what you want and I can get what I want and maybe together by helping enough people we can both win and I said, well, what are you talking about? And she says, well, have you ever heard of network marketing? And I said, stop, don't even go there. Because I had promised Ed that I would never, ever, ever, ever do network marketing again because I had convinced him to buy $8,000 worth of water filters years before that we put in the five pharmacies that we could not sell at any price. And he had goodwill come and take them away and Ed, never gets mad, except if I'm late. That's the only time he gets really mad. But he waved his finger at me and there was smoke coming out of his ears. And he said, don't you ever mention network marketing again. It does not work. And as I listened to her, I realized, what in the world am I going to do? So I said, okay, if you really think this is a possibility, let's figure out the how. And I think that initial program was maybe around $300 to get started. And I didn't have $300. And I went to what I would refer to as a guardian angel. And I said to my friend, I really need a big favor because I want to start working from home and I need $300 to get started. And I commit to you without a shadow of a doubt, I will pay you back within 60 days. And because of the long-term relationship we had, 
he lent me the $300. And of course, I paid him back in less than 30 days. Because why? I went to work. I was hungry. I was coachable. And I was willing to do whatever I needed to do. But what happened was those first three years in network marketing, total failure, total failure. And that was in the days, if you're old enough to remember, when long distance was 25 cents a minute. So my phone bills were like $500 a month. And we had to mail packages, you know, VH tapes and then audio cassette tapes and then CDs. So the goal was to, you know, to mail at least three packs a day. So you had to drive to the post office, stand in line. And back in those days, maybe it was, you know, $3.95 for priority mail or $4.95. Then you had to start the chasing game. Did you get it? Didn't you get it? Did you look at it? Didn't you look at it? I mean, it was difficult and uh, just never gave up believing it was possible. Because quite honestly, I saw people who could not walk and chew gum at the same time making gangster money. And I said, wait, I could build traditional businesses. Of course, I hired people, gave them a job description. We met every Friday. And after a month or two, if they didn't do what I needed, I could, well, I didn't fire them. That was Ed's job. I hired, he fired. But in network marketing, you can't fire anybody. And I can think of several people today. I wish I could fire, but I can't because I'm still hoping they're going to change their ways. So anyway, three years, in three years, I was in 11 companies in three years. In fact, in that little office here on one of the other walls, I had all the comp plans. I was doing five programs at one time trying to figure it out. And it was finally, finally in 2002 that I got a call about a new company launching. And I knew the fear of startup. I knew enough to know that the MLM graveyard is filled with startups. And that has not changed at all. So I got into network marketing, worked my tush off, and now we are having this Zoom from our beautiful home here in Lake Las Vegas. We were in Arizona for 14 years. And when we started to make the big, big bucks, our CPA, our certified public accountant said, you know, I know you've got a virtual office in Nevada, but I think it's time now you actually move there. So we built our million dollar home here in Lake Las Vegas. And this is my office from which network marketing made it possible because I invested in other people. So remember, it's not what you do. It's what you duplicate and multiply that creates success. And we've traveled the world. In fact, uh, as as Stephanie shared with you, we're now in isogenics through Zija, but the reality is it's because of Zango International that went bankrupt. Can you imagine a company that did a billion dollars in sales with one product in five years to go bankrupt? I mean, they disguised it as a sale into Zija, but it was a bankruptcy. And most of the world knows that. And I grieved, I grieved for about a year and a half. It was like, how is this possible? That in fact, as I was preparing this presentation that I'll share with you about Zango juice, I was literally in tears that something so great is now gone, but to Isogenics benefit, they now have the patented Zango juice, which I cannot live without. So let's talk a little bit about uh, where we live now and how did it become possible? Belief, willing to do whatever it takes and finding the right mentors. And you know, sometimes when people are introduced to the profession of network marketing, sometimes their sponsor doesn't have the same vision or the same drive and maybe they quit. And then you just have to keep searching up and up to the partners who are plugged in doing the business because we all make money by helping other people, regardless of where you are. So that's really, really important. And of course, I really believe 
that people, especially since this pandemic is happening. And I remember, I, I guess it's now maybe 29 years ago when someone gifted me the book, The Road Less Traveled. And I'll be honest, didn't read the whole book, but all you need to do is read the first chapter. And the first three words in the book is, life is difficult. And then Dr. M. Scott Peck goes on to explain that life is filled with obstacles. It's filled with change. It's filled with, with uh, uh, challenges. And how you handle those challenges is how you end up on the other side of change. So hope also stands for, in our profession, helping other people excel. And that's what we do. We give people hope that are coachable, that are willing, and who are maybe where they are today, but would rather be over there. But they can't get over there without making some changes. So if people are willing to be consistent just a little bit every day, their dreams can come true. But as Les Brown says in one of his videos, this is network marketing. So there's work in the word network marketing. I mean, just imagine, you know, if, if somebody was going to open a traditional business, I mean, if I was going to open another med surge business or at another pharmacy, we better have a couple hundred thousand dollars in ready to invest because it's going to take three to five years just to get a return on investment before you can take a penny out of a traditional business. Yet in the profession of network marketing, it's a tax deduction. You know, you're in your, you're self-employed. And if you don't know the tax benefits, my good friend, Sandy Botkin, that I met Sandy, who's a tax attorney who trains other tax attorneys and also a former trainer for the IRS. I mean, people don't understand if they still have a job. That's if they still have a job. That chunk taken out for taxes, they could legally keep most of it without paying it back and pay less taxes, just like the rich and famous. So I'm really big in educating people the importance of having a home-based business so that you keep more of what you make if in fact you've still got a job. So we know that world is changing as well. So I'm so excited to talk about Zango Juice because we've been on Zango Juice now, um, gosh, I guess about since 2002. We were one of the early distributors. And as much as I knew startup was a huge risk, we come from a science background. So when somebody sent me literally dozens and dozens of research papers on the mangosteen fruit, which is the national fruit of Thailand, of course, we check out everything. And Ed comes back to me and he says, oh my goodness, Sandy, this is a COX-2 inhibitor. Now, for those of you who are not healthcare practitioners and do not understand COX-2, it's basically inflammation. So any disease, any disease from uh, heart disease, cancer, Alzheimer's, diabetes, you name it, is related to inflammation in your body at the cellular level that you don't see, you don't even feel it. Every disease. And there's a blood test that you can take. It's called C-reactive protein score. So let me tell you how I found out about CRP for short. Before Tango now, my migraine headaches were so bad. And my internist in Scottsdale refused to renew my medications. I was on Axert, Amitrex, and Furanol with codeine. None of them were working. I was popping pills like they were candy, which is very, very dangerous as you can imagine. And I went in to get my scripts filled because even though Ed was a pharmacist now working for others, he still needed a script to cover my drugs because they're controlled drugs. And my doctor says to me, not gonna renew your prescriptions. I said, what do you mean you're not gonna renew my prescriptions? He says, Sandy, your headaches are getting worse and worse and worse. And now of course we're going through the legal battle. He said, you've never had a checkup. You just run in and out for your scripts and you're turning 60 at the time. And he said, do you realize you could have a brain tumor? And I went, what? Brain tumor? Oh my God. Okay. 
just send me for whatever tests I have to go through. So he sent me for a whole bunch of tests. And the first doctor he sent me to was a cardiologist because my dad dropped dead at 64 of a heart attack. My mother also had heart disease. It runs in the family. And when I went to her, she did this blood test called C-reactive protein score. And I said, well, what does that indicate? Why are you doing a blood test? And she said, it's a biomarker for not just heart disease, but all disease. And I said, and? And she says, well, let's see what the results are. And when the results came back, uh, I said to her, so what? where are we? She said, well, your C-reactive protein score, by the way, this blood test is typically done by cardiologists, internists, um, endocrinologists don't do it anymore. They used to because of the, of the reduction in coverage for Medicare. So cardiologists, internists, if there's an indicator, will do the test. And she said, well, in the CRP blood test, you should score three or below to be safe. Because if you know anybody that's been diagnosed with a disease, you probably also know it takes about seven to nine years before it manifests itself. And usually it's too late. So the key is prevention, right? So my test results come back and I score as 7.1. She said three was the threshold. I started to cry and I said, no, wait a minute. I don't want to drop dead. I mean, I've got grandchildren now. What are we going to prescribe? Because to me, there's a drug for everything. And she said to me, Sandy, there's nothing that I can prescribe that's safe that you can stay on long term. It's all about stress, diet, exercise. Okay. Went for all the other tests and thank God there was no brain tumor. And I think you'd agree, headaches versus a brain tumor. I was thrilled to continue to have the migraines. I had lost six days a month for over a decade and was prepared to keep doing that instead of having a brain tumor, obviously. And I don't know if you will believe in the law of attraction or things don't happen by accident. I mean, why did Stephanie and, I, Stephanie and I meet? Because we're of like mind, obviously. We want to help a lot of people. And uh, so when, when it was probably four to six weeks Later, I got the call about this new company launching with the mangosteen fruit from Thailand. And of course, Ed checked it out, saw that it was a COX-2 inhibitor. So just so you know, there's two pain pathways, COX-1, COX-2. COX-2 is the bad one. That's the one that can kill you. But Zango juice is focused primarily on the COX-1. That's why it's safe for even babies to take. So we're going to talk a little bit about why the mangosteen fruit from Thailand is called and the first super fruit. We actually named that category. And what's interesting, when I first got started, and I would talk about, you know, we're launching a product with the Hulk fruit puree of the mangosteen from Thailand. People would say, oh, I love mangoes. I eat them all the time. I'd have to say, no, 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 no. Nothing to do with mangoes. It's mangosteen. It's a Jewish mango. And they'd all laugh and, and we'd go on forward from that. So it is truly the only, only super fruit in the world. In fact, if you, if you go to the National Library of Science and research aloe vera, which is incredible as far as scientific benefits, mangosteen is right up there, just right up there. And what's interesting is that this little tiny fruit from Southeast Asia has been used to heal people since almost the beginning of time. And I, I remember when we went on our first trip um, to Thailand, uh, I was sitting at, at a breakfast table and they had just bowls of mangosteen and we didn't know how to open the fruit. And uh, one of my associates took a knife and started to cut the rind, which is very hard. And the knife slipped and she slipped her hand. She had to go to the hospital for stitches. And then next to me was a surgeon and he showed me how never to use a knife to open it. You just put the fruit in, in your hand and you just squeeze it and it pops open. Anyway, um, it, the inside of the fruit tastes almost like ice cream. 
And of course, this fruit from Thailand has been used for thousands and thousands of years to heal anything and everything. So it's important to know that. And it even is documented back in the Chinese Ming Dynasty, dynasty for people who are sick with almost any disorder. And this was documented in 1885 in the London News. So we now in Isogenics have something that no one in the world has but Isogenics. And you got it through adoption, if you will, Zango from Zija and now into Isogenics, which hopefully is our final home for sure for our patented Zango juice. And in the past, Queen Victoria would give people knighthood if they could bring her the mangosteen fruit. And rarely did anyone was able to bring it so far to her because of the transportation problems and how fast the, the fruit will go bad. And that's why she's also known now mangosteen as the queen of fruits. And you've all heard this statement, let food be thy medicine. And that hasn't changed in spite of the drug companies. And you know, all the contraindications of drugs. And sometimes I say, sometimes they're a necessary evil, but why not do what we refer to as complementary medicine, meaning introduce also the safe alternatives to help your body heal and stay well and be ageless, obviously. So this is what the fruit itself looks like. So the rind itself is very, very firm and you, you really can't put a knife to it. And the inside of the rind is really nasty. I mean, as I was sitting at that breakfast table and the surgeon happened to be Filipino, he said to me, put your tongue on the rind. So I did, I didn't know any better. Oh my goodness, I never tasted anything so nasty ever. I ran to my suite and I was brushing my tongue and I took some chocolate. It took hours to get rid of that nasty taste. It's the white delicious pulp that tastes like ice cream, but all of the nutrient dense uh, botanicals and advantages are in that nasty rind. And I remember on uh, the first trip, it was called Sweet 16. And it was the only time anyone could ever qualify for that trip. It was the first 16 distributorships that reached the highest level. And we were blessed to be able to earn that because of what we and the team did. And we were awarded a trip to Germany and Venice. And we actually got to meet uh, at Wild Flavors. And we'll talk about that in a minute about how in the world they created something that tastes so delicious that even little babies smack their lips because it's so delicious. But just know that now in Isogenics, you've got something that nobody else in the world has that dates back to the 12th and 13th century. I mean, think about that. And you have it exclusively for not just intestinal health and skin conditions and infections. In fact, I have a friend that used to take uh, the Zango juice. I think she still does to that. And what was left in the residue at the bottom of her cup, she'd take it and smear it on her face because of, of um, dark spots. And uh, our youngest grandson, was born with one of the worst cases of eczema the Children's Hospital in Philadelphia ever saw. And they had this baby on medications and steroids. And we put Justin on the mangosteen juice, uh, our Zango juice, when he was probably about four months old. And I didn't tell my daughter-in-law we were visiting. Of course, I told her when she came home that night because she was breastfeeding and didn't want to introduce anything else. And I said, you know, Hillary, the baby can't get any worse. And then, you know, he licked his lips. And my husband created a cream w with a, um, with, he boiled the actual Zango juice, added it to this vegetable based cream and put it on the baby. And in two days, between what he was taking internally and topically, and he was four months old at the time, he just turned 13. 
and he still drinks, he has his own order of Zenga juice every single month because if he runs out, he calls his grandfather and says, uh oh, I'm out of mangoes, Dean. I'm going to have a breakout. So we have him on an auto delivery program. And we also still ship him his jar if he has, especially in the summertime when he swims and in the chlorine pools, he'll sometimes have a breakout because the eczema is in the DNA of his cell. So it'll always be there. But the mangoes, Dean, Zango juice helps. Uh, make it think it's not there anymore so he can be healthier. So how did we get the name Zango? And I think it's just genius. The owners of Zango took the XAN from Xanthons, which you'll learn are the supercharged anti-inflammatories that are very, very unique. Hold on one second. Um, let me mute myself. So anyway, uh, my husband had his door open and I had to ask him to shut it. Um, they took the XAN from Xanthons and the Go from Mangosteen and created the word Zango. Is that genius? I mean, because people often say, well, how did you get the name Zango? And it was really simple, Xanthons, Mangosteen. So pretty cool, I think. So, and what's so unusual that Initially, when Wild Flavors, and we'll talk about Wild Flavors, created the product, they issued a patent. They were going for a patent. And my reaction was, that's nuts. It's, it's a natural botanical. He, you, it's like, you know, how do you get a patent on blueberries? Or how do you get a patent on any fruit? They'll never get a patent on it. And it was about three years into launching Zango Juice, that they actually got a patent. Can you believe that? Um, based on the formulation. So it's the whole fruit puree. So they take the nasty bitter rind, the delicious fruit, the seeds, even the leaves. The only thing they remove is the stem to have the only patented whole fruit puree of mangosteen. And because that rind is so, so nasty, they added some natural flavor concentrates like strawberry and blueberry to, to an apple just to cut the taste of the rind. So it ends up delicious. So we use everything from the fruit except the stem to harness the power of what Zango juice has to offer. And if you look at people who drink Zango juice consistently, so what means consistent? about two ounces with every meal. And in the beginning, we did not know with food, without food, nobody had any idea. But over time, we realized if you've got some food on the gut, even a handful of almonds, uh, it absorbs better in the gut. So six ounces a day, preferably two with breakfast, two with lunch, two with dinner. And even diabetics can take this and it's equivalent to like maybe a half of an apple or half of a banana. And no added sugars or powders or substitutes. And I remember many years ago, there were the juice wars. Everybody was coming out with a juice. Everybody was trying to catch up to Zango. And guess which is the only juice that survived. Now, there are companies that have a juice with mangosteen in it, but it does not perform the way the whole fruit puree patented of Zango does. So when you look in 1983, I mean, this is a long time ago, they were talking about the unique properties of the mangosteen fruit called Xanthones back in 1983. Is that credibility or, or what? But it gets even better. I actually have a copy of the Gourmet magazine and the X Factor and Dr. Templeman was probably the world's leading researcher on, on uh, mangosteen. And he said, I am now convinced that mangosteen will be without a doubt the most successful food supplement ever. And it has proven to be just that. And now it's found a new home in Isogenics, thank goodness. So hopefully all of our Isogenics family can now start promoting 
everyone with optimal wellness adding Zango juice to their daily routine. In um, Kevin Trudeau's book, Natural Cures, uh, of course it was mentioned there and in health magazines all over the place. And, you know, the Los Angeles Times, I mean, it, 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 it has been probably the most researched botanical fruit ever even before there was a product. So pretty cool. So what are xanthons actually? Well, they're in nature and they're rare. Most botanicals or, or trees that have xanthons, you cannot ingest. So it is rare and the mangosteen fruit has the most xanthons than anything else on the planet. And we all know about free radical damage. We all know about needing to boost your immune system, about cartilage for joint and flexibility. And of course, our um, elixir goes along with that as well. Muscle pain, oh my goodness. And by the way, my migraines, I forgot to tell you, after taking Zango, whenever I remembered, we're going back you know, 19 years ago, um, it took me, 90 days, 90 days. And all of a sudden, the migraines went from three day episodes to two day episodes. And the third month, one day episode. And now it's 19 years without a migraine episode. Can you believe that? 19 years. And I know I'm not supposed to say that publicly because according to the F. DA and I can't make any health claims. I'm not making a health claim. Trust me. I don't know if you'll have those results. All I know is I, I was on serious drugs and after 90 days on Arzenga juice, I am no longer on those serious drugs for my migraine headaches. And by the way, my C-reactive protein blood test, she had me come back about four months later for a follow-up visit to do an echocardiogram and a stress test. And she redid the blood work and it went from 7.1 to 0 0.3. Now we're going back 18 years ago and it has stayed between 0 0.1 and 0 0.3 for 18 years in spite of stress, <laughs> which we're all going through. So just amazing. So there have been so many independent studies done on the mangosteen fruit and this unique property called xanthones. And whether it's the biochemical pharmacology, free radical research, enzyme inhibition, plantamedica, I mean, the journal publications are countless on what is in our zango juice uh, with the whole fruit puree of the mangosteen. <clears throat> so just know <clears throat> that you're gonna be better off taking it because nobody knows what's going on at the cellular level. I mean, how many people do you know, oh my gosh, who wake up one day and all of a sudden they've got a disease that they wish they did not have. So the goal is obviously big time prevention. So I really, really encourage you to visit pubmed.gov, pubmed.gov. And just type in xanthones, X-A-N-T-H-O-N-E-S. Then you can also type in mangosteen and just see the studies that have been done on this particular botanical. Now, I did this not too long ago on xanthones. So look at how many results I got. 3,922 research papers not done by Zango or Zija or Isogenic, but by universities and laboratories around the world. I mean, that's impressive to me, at least. Now, here's something that I found, and I can't remember, this was from 2015, there we go. The daily consumption of a mangosteen-based drink, drink improves the antioxidant, anti-inflammatory biomarkers. Think about that. This was a controlled clinical trial. So if you want to be healthier, and what if you're not so healthy right now, you want to get back to health, why wouldn't you drink Zango juice? So this is who our manufacturer is. And I have to tell you, um, in the world of manufacturing, 
there is probably only five manufacturers that have the same certification as wild flavors in Heidelberg, Germany. Uh, they manufacture for Pepsi-Cola, Coca-Cola, Capri Sun. They do Red Bull knockoffs. Leslie Capri Sun is all of theirs. And when we were on that very first trip that was awarded way back when, we were the only group that was ever permitted inside Wild Flavors. And it was like going to the White House. I mean, you couldn't take your purses in, you couldn't take a camera in, there was security everywhere. And then we sat in an auditorium where a half a dozen of the 150 scientists that they have on staff did a presentation on how they developed the taste for Zango juice. And it was fascinating, our tongue and our mouth. And they had these, these little tiny test things in front of each of us and went over how each area of the tongue ends up giving you the sensation of either pleasure or negative taste. And when they were developing the Zango juice, the whole fruit puree, they basically said to the owners of Zango, you know, do you want it to taste good or do you want it to taste sort of nasty? And thank goodness they said, well, if it can't taste good, good would be better because you know as well as I do, sometimes products that are really good for you really taste nasty and you'll never get a child to take anything that's nasty and you won't get my husband to take anything that's nasty either. So anyway, um, we were actually their largest worldwide account in a company that was 73 years old. And their certification is only likened to four other facilities in the world. So the, on the bottom of the bottles, if you can see it, there's actually a number and that actually identifies the tree, the actual tree in Thailand where the mango steam fruit is made for that batch of bottles. And what's interesting, early on we said, well, is there gonna be enough mangosteen to service the world? And most people don't know that the mangosteen fruit grows both in North Thailand and South Thailand. So when it's not available in one part of that country, it's available in the other part of the country. And when they pick the mangosteen from the trees with gloves, by the way, with gloves, they're very careful to get it to the manufacturing facility in a very short period of time. And those fruits that drop on the ground because they're ripe and too ripe to be picked to be manufactured, the ones on the ground, I believe, are sent to the other companies who, mango, who, de, who develop a mango steam juice product, but the stuff that Wild would use that's, that's laying on the ground. So it's, it's just amazing to know that we've got a unique, patented, really category creator, whole fruit puree of a superfood that nobody else has, except now Isogenics, in which we're part of that family now and it but it also can, contains catechins like from green tea and proanthocyanidins and polysaccharides in addition to the, the xanthan so when you look at people who've been drinking zango juice for at least a year and when i say consistently you know maybe four to six ounces a day minimum now if they have cancer it's a whole other protocol and we can talk about that on another call <clears throat> because let me tell you anybody that i know that has cancer, sadly, you know, the likelihood of it coming back is a high probability. So if I were them, I'd IV Zango juice as much as I could afford. And we can talk about that at another time. But it's really, really important to know that this Zango juice patented whole puree has everything that you need to remain healthy longer. Now, it doesn't have vitamins. We still need, like, I love the Moringa stuff because if you ask Mrs. Google, who's my best friend, you know, what's the most nutrient dense botanical on earth? It's Moringa. It is without a doubt, Moringa. So when you combine the Moringa 
with the patented whole fruit puree of the mango steen, as far as I'm concerned, we're covered. We are covered. So the Zango juice is not pasteurized, you know, no artificial ingredients or additives or, you know, no sucralose, God forbid, no artificial colors and dyes. And obviously uh, for vegans, truly, truly, and not so easy to travel now um, with uh, the, the Zango juice in your carry on. But typically if I'm going somewhere for at least a week, I'll ship a case to the arriving to my hotel, arriving guest, Sandy and Ed Cohen. So it's there when I arrive, because I can't go without it or I'll get a migraine and I can't take that chance. So anybody know who this is? Does this look familiar, this actor? And he's actually drinking a bottle of Zanko juice that he put a label on it called Tiger's Blood. And uh, Sheen, what's his name? Marty Sheen, is it maybe? Eddie, what's his name? Sheen, first name. Whatever. Uh, Martin's what? Martin's the father. Martin's the father. So Charlie. Charlie so, Sheen. Charlie, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I don't, anyway, he was drinking tiger's blood on a balcony of his hotel because he had a hangover and somebody took the picture. So for the millennials who are students and sometimes drink too much, I understand that Zango juice is great for a recovery from hangover. So a little side note on that. Um, oh, how did I lose my slides? Hang on, did I do that? Hang on. I don't, I'm not oh, sure. There we go. I have okay. a quick question for you because I'm, I'm getting a few, a few people to ask, what is the difference between Zango and Zango Reserve? Okay, I'm getting to that. You're ahead of me. Okay, good question. I promise I'm getting there. Okay. <laughs> so the bottom line is we all know that health is wealth, right? I mean, you know, you give up all the Mercedes and all the Rolls Royces to have your health back. So that's a definite. So you were one slide too early in the 70s. So what's the difference between the what I call the classic Zango juice and the reserve? Now, at one point in time for Europe, they created the, the, the Zango Reserve. They apparently, maybe because of who Europe is, they wanted more Xanthones. So it cost a little bit more and it has 20% more Xanthones in the whole fruit puree of the liquid in the reserve compared to the classic. So I hope that you, you have two available now, you know, a case, a, a box of four of the Zango Classic, and you also have the Zango Reserve. And some people will alternate, like Eddie and I will put on our ordership, one of each, because just because more is better. And Ed does not drink two ounces three times a day. He's the belief more is better. And he drinks more than a half a bottle a day of whatever we have open at the moment. So we go through about three to four cases a month, just for us, just for us. Why? Because our bodies is the only one we've got that I know of. And as Jim Rohn said, take care of your body. It's the only place you have to live. So with isogenics, we've got diet, we understand exercise and supplementation with each equals optimal wellness or the ability to truly enjoy life and be ageless. But there's so many health benefits of the mango steamed fruit. Just do your homework, but most importantly, get on Zango juice for sure. And I have to tell you, I tell this to people all the time because Life is like a roll of toilet paper. The closer you get to the end, the faster it goes. And I remember, oh, it was maybe a month ago, I was 40 years old. I was 40, thought my life was living the dream. And I wake up today, which was like a blink, like, oh my God, where did all these years go? So you have a choice. Life is about choices. Do you want to help make the world a better place for you and your family? Do you wanna be on purpose to help other people to have a better quality of life? Not only with health, but their finances as well. Because in isogenics, people can actually be just a customer. They don't even have to build a team to earn free product. So let people know in mass about Zango Juice. 
because together we can change the world. And I don't know if you remember this movie years ago, Pay It Forward. I think that's what it was called. And this little precious little boy was drawing circles on a blackboard. I get circles. Do you get circles? Of course, we all get circles because it's about duplication and multiplying. So I want to thank you for allowing us to be a part of your learning curve about Zango Juice. And if you visit our um, website, sandyanded.com, our story about Zango journey is there, including a video that the company flew a film crew to Arizona when we were living there. And I could not watch that video for about two years because every time I watched it or tried to watch it, I would break down crying. The pain that we went through for eight years and the solution ended up network marketing to get us our lives back by helping other people. So if people want something different than where they are today, reach out to them, tell them your story, tell them our story, because nobody was more against the profession of network marketing than my husband. And God bless my best friend, my partner for life. He never stops me from doing what I think needs to be done. And it has actually not just changed our lives, but tens of thousands of others as well. And uh, I want to thank Stephanie for allowing me to be visiting with you today. And I hope you learned something. And if you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to reach out to Stephanie and she can get an email to me and be happy to contribute in any way that I can. So let me stop sharing screen, I think. If you wanna take it back, Stephanie, or did you already? I, yeah, we okay. are here. Oh my gosh, that was just phenomenal um, in so many ways. I mean, your story is incredible. And being able to share a story like that with someone who may be going through something like that or, or just even on their own level, but, and then to learn about the Zango. And I have this, I have three bottles. I did drink one, I bought the case and I, I haven't given it the attention that it certainly deserves. So thank you so much for that because I'm, I'm excited. Um, I, I know we're, we're right at our time to end, but does anyone have questions that you would like to ask Sandy? Just about the slides, because they were really good. <laughs> <laughs> that was really helpful because I, I missed, I started taking pictures with my phone just to catch, I couldn't write fast enough. And thank you for that. But I'm an ex-school teacher, you know, if we can use more senses, auditory with visual. So I am a big believer in trying to encompass as many of those senses as I can. And thank you for that comment. Thank you. Wonderful. Oh, and, and I have a question. I have a question. Go ahead. <laughs> Is um, see the Zango juice? Is it going to be available in the European markets? Um, it is in certain countries now. In Zango and Zija, we were I think in fifty-one countries. That's not the case in Isogenics. So where do you live? Where are you asking specifically? I'm in London, UK. I think we're in yeah. the UK. But Stephanie can find out for sure, pretty sure. They closed down the Philippines. They closed down all of Africa. Uh, but UK, I think, is wide open. Okay, thank Australia you. Australia is also open for sure. Good question. I have a question. On the bottle, does it say like an ounce is a serving? You mentioned four ounces as a serving? No. There's 25 and a half ounces in a bottle. And we suggest taking two ounces a day with each meal. So two ounces with breakfast, two ounces with lunch, two ounces with dinner, unless you're really, really sick. Or if you've got severe RA rheumatoid arthritis or ju juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, then you would take two to three times as much. Some doctors suggest taking what is called a loading dose if you've got a problem. So drink maybe four to five ounces three times a day for a week and then titrate down because everybody's different everybody reacts i mean think about it migraine headaches for 
decades, if I had stopped drinking the Django juice after 60 days, I'd still lose six days a month. But I persevered with it, knowing it was a natural botanical. And some people may see results in 30 days, some 60 days, some 90 days. Depends how long you've had a condition. So if you're over six months old, <laughs> you're going to need a little bit more time for the body to adjust. And why is it recommended to have it, have it with a meal? Something about food in the gut has it absorbed better. I have a question. The Zango is available in the UK NFR. So you have to switch your catalog to NFR and then you'll find the Zija products there. Actually, it's only the Zango Reserve that we have in UK, not the Zango Juice. The Zango Classic. It might be only the Reserve. But guys, if you can get additional questions to Stephanie, I have another call that I'm late for that I can't, it, it's like, I, I, didn't, I didn't realize I was scheduling it so tight. So my apologies, it's my fault. But hopefully you can formulate your questions, get them to Stephanie. It'll be my desire to obviously get back to you as fast as I, my fast fingers will let me.